Hello everyone, the topic is zones of fish. Now this is a subtopic from a topic called rationale of the endodontic treatment. So now what is the zones of fish? So it is the reaction of the periradicular tissue to the noxious products of the tissue necrosis, bacterial products and the antigenic agents from the root canal and this was described by fish and hence it is known as zones of fish. So basically this is how the body reacts and how there is formation of some periradicular pathosis that can be your cyst or abscess or granuloma. So this is nothing but the reaction of the periradicular tissue to all the noxious stimuli or the bacterial product or the antigenic product. So that means when you have caries, so that means it has those bacteria which is present. So that bacteria, it travels through this root canal and then it goes in the periradicular space through the apical foramen. So how your periradicular space, it like react to this bacteria or this antigenic product. So this was described by the fish. So what he basically did was he established the experimental foci of infection in the jaws of guinea pigs by drilling openings in the bone and then packing them with the wool fibers which was saturated by the microorganism. So by that he got like basically four well-defined zones that are the zone of infection, zone of contamination, zone of irritation and zone of stimulation. So these were the four zones and this is a very commonly asked SAQ. So zone of infection. So it is characterized by the polymorphonucleus leukocytes. So in fish study infection it was present only at the center of lesion. So you will see over here. So this is a zone of infection. So according to the fish, when he did the study, so he saw that the infection, it was present only in the center of the lesion and nowhere else. So that means the microorganisms are present only in that lesion. Now where there is infection, so that means there is microorganisms in that area only. So this is the zone of infection as the name says. There is infection and the microorganisms are present only in this area. So the only microorganisms which are not disposed by the polymorphonuclear leukocytes, they were found in the Haversian canals or in the fissures of the bone matrix which were made by the birds. So now you know when there is some infection which is present in the body. So the leukocytes, they come and attack this bacteria. So as so this is nothing but the defense mechanism of the body. So when the leukocytes, they cannot dispose of that particular microorganism. So that microorganisms, you'll find them in the Haversian canals or in the fissures of the bone. So this is all about the zone of infection. Now, as the name says zone of infection, so there is infection which is present and in the center of the lesion and there are only microorganisms which are present in so your leukocytes it will come and it will attack this microorganism so that to destroy them this is the basic defense mechanism so this is nothing but the zone of infection now moving towards the next zone that is the now over here this blue one it is the zone of contamination so this zone of contamination it is characterized by the round cell infiltrate and lymphocyte now around the central zone so now this is like it is around the central zone so fish he observed that there is cellular destruction it is not from the bacteria themselves, but from the toxins which were discharged from the central zone. Now, as we have seen, so lymphocyte, it is attacking that bacteria. So bacteria, it gets destroyed in the central zone. So because of that, there is toxins which are released and this is nothing but the zone of contamination. And over there, you will see there is cellular destruction in this area because of those toxins of the bacteria. So now in this area, the bone cells, they have died and they have undergone autolysis. So the lacunae, they appeared empty. And in this, lymphocytes, they are prevalent everywhere. So this is nothing but the zone of contamination. That means the toxins, they are present in this area. And this area is contaminated by these toxins. And hence it is known as zone of contamination. And the cells which you will see are the round cell infiltrate and the lymphocytes. Now the next is the zone of irritation. So this is the zone of irritation. This green one. So the green dotted ones, they are the zone of irritation. So now this is the third zone. The cells which are most prominent or characterized in these zones are the macrophages and the osteoclast and histiocytes. So these are the cells which you will see in zone of irritation. So fish, he found evidence of irritation further from the central lesion as the toxins, they become more diluted. So now in this area, 
they also distinguished by the small round cells normal bone cells and the osteoclast could just about survive so now this is like the toxins they are getting diluted so in this area you'll see that some cells they survive so now they in this area of zone of irritation now irritation is the zone it is getting irritated so this means that so there is macrophages which is present and there are phagocytic cells so this cells what they do is they are digesting the collagen fibers whereas now in we have seen like it is characterized by osteoclast so osteoclast it is attacking the bone tissue which leads to the bone resorption now as the name says osteoclast so in this area the histological picture is that it signifies the body's attempt to initiate the repair so in this you will see there is repair which is started by the bone in the zone of irritation now the next and the last zone is the zone of stimulation now as the name says stimulating so you will see over here fibroblast and osteoblast so now osteoblast are the forming cells and fibroblast are again the forming cells so stimulation is stimulating so this zone it is characterized by fibroblast and the osteoblast so at the periphery so over here now this is the periphery so fish he noted that the toxins they were mild so now as the toxins which were released by the central so it were more over here it got diluted in the next zone and over here it is the mildest which is present so because of that they were enough to cause the stimulation so in response to the stimulation the collagen fibers they were let down by the fibroblast so over here now the collagen fiber it was disrupted in the stimulation now this collagen fiber it starts forming now as a wall of defense around the zone of irritation and a scaffolding one on which the osteoblast they form the new bone so this osteoblast it forms the new bone and the fibroblast it forms the new collagen fiber as the defense mechanism so over here now this new bone it was built in the irregular fashion so these are the zones of fish so first is the infection so where you will see leukocytes which are present the next is the contamination zone where you will see round cells infiltrate and lymphocytes then the zone of irritation where you will see the osteoclast and the phagocytic and macrophages cells then the zone of stimulation where you are stimulating so because of that you will see fibroblast and osteoblast over there so now we can apply this knowledge which we have gained in this fish experiment to understand better the reaction of the periradicular tissue to the pulpless tooth so the root canal it is the main site of infection so now over here your root canal it was the main site of infection because of this only the toxins or the bacteria it is going to this periradicular space so the microorganisms in the root canal they are rarely motile so this microorganisms they are rarely motile it's not like this microorganisms they go on themselves and they go in this periradicular space to produce this periradicular pathosis but the problem is the microorganisms they multiply and they grow in such a high rate that they do not like move from this root canal but what happens is as they are multiplying at a very fast rate so what happens is so they grow out of this root canal into this periradicular space and they are diffusing in this tissues so now the microorganisms they gain access to the periradicular area so they are destroyed by the leukocyte so this is the basic defense mechanism so when the microorganisms they are sufficiently virulent or when they are enough to present that they overwhelm the defensive mechanism so at that time there is the formation of the periradicular like infection so basically now we have seen there is defense mechanism so this pmn cells and they fight against the bacteria so if this bacteria they are very virulent and like they are very large in number so what happens is so at that time so this like leukocytes they cannot fight against them so at, so this results in the formation of this periradicular lesion the polymorphonuclear leukocytes they destroys the microorganism as rapidly as they gain access to the periradicular tissues so the result is a chronic abscess now when the leukocytes they destroy this bacteria so they are destroying it at a very high rate so there is formation of the chronic abscess so the toxin products of the microorganisms and the necrotic pulp in the root canal they are irritating and they are destructive to the periradicular tissue and all this together with the enzymes which are released by the dead leukocyte it helps to produce that pus in your abscess 
so this leads to the formation of chronic abscess now at the periphery of this destroyed area osseous tissue the toxin bacterial product they may be diluted enough to act as a stimulant now we have seen there is a zone of stimulant so this toxin products from the root canal they diffuse from this apical foramen so this so they are diffusing from the apical foramen and they destroy the bone in the immediate vicinity so because of that now this bacteria it also destroy the bone in the vicinity so now this like the toxins they are so diluted that they act as a stimulant and this results in the formation of granuloma and the last is when the fibroblasts they build the fibrous tissue and the osteoblasts they form the formation of a sclerotic bone so if in addition the epithelial rest of malleus they are stimulated a cyst will form now over here now we have seen the stimulation so there is formation of the collagen fibers and the bone but if there is also formation of the cell rest of malleus which was present so because of that there is formation of a cyst so this is how the body it reacts to like microorganisms and bacteria and the toxins and because of that there is formation of the abscess or granuloma or cyst so this is nothing but the zones of fish so now what is the like rationally of endodontic treatment so basically it is to remove all that particular bacteria which is present through surgical or non surgical way and like freeing this area of all the bacteria so this was all about the zones of fish i hope you found this video helpful thank you so much